Is evolution a myth? How did we get here? Why are we here? Why do we look the way we do and act the way we do? Why do we think the way we do? These are all super big questions that humans have been asking themselves for thousands of years. Pretty much ever since humans have had conscious thought, trying to figure out how we got to where we are is one of the biggest mysteries. Sadly, this is not something that we can just remember, but we have to do a lot of investigating. Whatever did happen to us would have happened thousands upon thousands of years ago, and. Nobody can remember that far back. One of the most popular explanations for how humans effectively became humans is evolution. This is a relatively new idea when we consider our vast history and is probably the most popular in the scientific community. But is it actually true? How do we know that we evolved from something and how would that have even worked? Is evolution really just another myth that we created because we don't know the answer? Well, let's break it down. First things first, exactly what is evolution and how does it happen? Live Science says, the theory of evolution by natural selection was first formulated in Charles Darwin's book On the Origin of Species, published in 1859. In his book, Darwin describes how organisms evolve over generations through the inheritance of physical or behavioral traits as National Geographic explains. The theory starts with the premise that within a population, there is a variation in traits, such as beak shape in one of the Galapagos finches Darwin studied. According to the theory, individuals with traits that enable them to adapt to their environment will help them survive and have more offspring spring, which will inherit those traits. Individuals with less adaptive traits will less frequently survive to pass them on. Over time, the traits that enable species to survive and reproduce will become more frequent in the population and the population will change or evolve. Through natural selection, Darwin suggested, genetically diverse species could arise from a common ancestor. Darwin didn't know the mechanism by which traits were passed on. He didn't know about genetics, the mechanism by which genes encode for certain traits and those traits are passed from one generation to the next. He also didn't know about genetic mutation, which is the source of natural variation. But future research by geneticists provided the mechanism and additional evidence for evolution by natural selection. So that's kind of the basic thought behind evolution. We started as one thing and because that one thing had variations to it, the successful variations of that thing kept growing and the unsuccessful variations ended up dying out. Over a long period of time, this results in basically a completely new thing entirely. Now this seems pretty far-fetched when you actually think about it. Like is Darwin trying to tell me that I used to be a frog or something and then somehow I magically became a human? Well, yeah, when we think about it like that, it does seem pretty ridiculous. But we also need to factor in that this would have taken millions of years to happen and these changes, although they seem dramatic now, would have been so tiny and minute as they were happening that it wouldn't have seemed like a whole lot. Now this conversation could be put to bed if we just put forward some solid evidence though. And that is sadly where the problem lies. One of the reasons that some people still hold out on evolution, potentially being a myth, is because there isn't any hard and concrete proof. Like if we put the evidence into a court of law, then they might say there isn't enough to convict somebody with this. Now the evidence that we do have is from DNA. When we evaluate DNA, we can see a lot of similarities in all aspects of life, which indicates that all life is connected, which then further indicates we may have at some point all been the same or close to it. Another reason that people often oppose the evolutionary theory is because it goes completely against the other big theory, creationism. Oxford Bibliography says, creationism in the broadest sense refers to God as creator. It is an essential element in the beliefs of the so-called Abrahamic religions and centers on the claim that God made the physical world out of nothing. Now the most popular of these stories is about how God created the world and universe and all its entirety in only six days. He made humans, he made the elements, he made everything in less than a week. For a long time, this theory was the one that ran the world and people just kind of accepted that God created it all and if he so wanted to, he could take it away. Darwin is the most famous one in the early going who went against this principle and said that it was in fact evolution that caused humans to be humans. Now evolution as a whole is not an argument actively attacking religion, but the creationist theory is one of the most prominent in religion and evolution absolutely does put a few holes into that. So there really is only room for one prominent theory here and they both 
can't be correct. Well, we asked the question about evolution and the evidence behind it, but what about creationism? Does it have any evidence? Short answer, no. No, it doesn't. Ultimately, the creationism argument is based on a lot of he said, she said. There have been people who have come out and said that they've seen things or know things, but there really isn't any tangible evidence to prove any of it. Now, as we've already evaluated, there isn't a ton of tangible evidence to prove evolution either, but there certainly is more of it. This video isn't about attacking creationism though, it's about figuring out whether or not evolution is a myth. Now, a myth, if we are getting technical with it, is defined as a traditional story, especially one concerning the early history of a people, or explaining some natural or social phenomenon, and typically involving supernatural beings or events. It can also be defined as a belief that is widely held but is actually false. Now, do I think that evolution is a widely held belief? Yes, I do. Most of the people in the world at this point believe in evolution, and therefore I would argue that it is a belief that is widely held. Do I think that this belief that is widely held is false though? No. I don't. I'm certainly no scientist or evolutionary biologist or anything like that, but everything that I've read about evolution and the thinking behind it leads me to believe that at this current juncture, it is the best explanation that we have for having got where we are right now. Is it possible that there are still some things we don't fully understand about it? Absolutely there is. In fact, I would even bet on it. But I think that right now, based on everything we know about the world and the evidence that we have, it's the strongest possible explanation and considering I really don't know anything about anything, I'm gonna have to buy in and believe it. So basically guys, evolution is not a myth, it is a well thought out theory that explains where we came from and how we came to be. But please let me know in the comments down below what you thought about this question. Is there actually another explanation that I didn't even touch on in this video that explains everything better? I would love to hear it if there is. Also please hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. I've been your host Nicholas Playlog and I'll catch you next time.